Good evening, everyone. How are you doing? This is Casanova. Um, as promised, we are going to do a series of online videos in preparation for Advent. So um, our first week of Advent is preparation. Now, what does preparation mean exactly? Preparation means to get ready, get ready for something. And with preparation, there's always an aspect of expectation. So looking at the story of Jesus, um, God didn't just say, okay, Mary, you're going to get pregnant and bam, it is what it is. He prepared them for what was going to come. So there's two scriptures I really want to look at tonight. The first one is from the Luke narrative which is the story of how Mary was told that she was going to be the mother of Jesus. So I'm going to go ahead and read that to you. So it's Luke 2, 26 through 38, and it reads, In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man named Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Greetings, favorite woman. The Lord is with you. But she was deeply troubled by this statement, wondering what kind of greeting this could be. Then the angel told her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Now listen, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Mary asked the angel, How can this be, since I have not had sexual relations with a man? The angel replied to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And consider your relative Elizabeth. Even she has conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called childless. For nothing will be impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, said Mary. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel left her. The second scripture is from the Matthew narrative. So Matthew 1, 18 to 25. This is when, when um, the angel spoke to Joseph and it reads as follows. The birth of Jesus Christ came about in this way. After his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, it was discovered before they came together that she was pregnant from the Holy Spirit. So her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her publicly, decided to divorce her secretly. But after he had considered these things, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what has been conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. See, the virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will name him Emmanuel, which is translated, God is with us. When Joseph spoke, woke up, he did as the Lord's angel had commanded him. He married her, but did not have sexual relations with her until she gave birth to a son, and he named him Jesus. So, for Jesus to come, there has to be preparation. They had to make the arrangements and get their minds prepared for the fact that they're going to be taking care of a kid. But also the added layer that this is going to be the kid who's the son of God and was conceived... Um, Immaculately, <laughs> that's the best way I can put it. Um, he was he was conceived by immaculate conception. So Mary was like, okay, I'm the vessel of God. Joseph had more preparation to do because he knew what was going on. It was like, okay, I haven't touched her, and you know she's a defiled woman in 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 the eyes of culture. But she's considered a defiled woman, and then the then. Then the angel of God step up and say, no, wait, you have a part in this too. Prepare yourself because you have to raise him. He's coming from your line. You have to raise him. And notice that the, that the preparation, the word of preparation came with prophecy. Let's talk about that for a second. Um, the prophetic directs. The, I'm going to say that again. The prophetic directs. The prophetic is supposed to point, supposed to lead people in a direction. And the thing is, you, there cannot be preparation without expectation. And the prophetic provides that expectation. Like, it provides the expectation of what, 
of what God is going to do. So there had to be the voice of God saying, hey, this is what's going on. And then they, partnering with the word, prepared themselves for what's coming next. They didn't know how this was going to go. They didn't know that, that you know, Jesus is going to be born and then 33 years later on, on the cross, they didn't know. They just knew that at this moment, we have to prepare for the birth of the Son of God. And the thing is, the culture and was preparing for Jesus' birth long before this moment. I mean, the prophet Isaiah, the excerpt, the see the virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son. And they will name him Emmanuel, comes out of the book of Isaiah. That's the seventh, chap seventh chapter in the 14th verse. So Isaiah was prophesied of the Messiah. The concept of the Messiah had been had been passed down through generations, and the prayer, the prophetic prayers of the Messiah have been passed down through generations. That they expect the vindication of our people, expect the establishment of the kingdom of God, expect all these things. But you can expect something, but not be ready for it. So the step that they're taking, that they took. Now was saying, okay, you you've told her this, but now let's we're getting ready for it. We're preparing ourselves for it. Joseph, if Joseph would have walked away, the whole narrative would have been different because Jesus is supposed to come from the line of David. That's Joseph's line. So if Joseph said, "Nah, God, you tripping," favor about both of them. And they knew their purpose and all right, let me prepare for this. So let's turn this to a 2018 concept. What is God preparing you for next? Where are you headed? Have you sought God about God prepare me for the next level? Um, I know a couple of weeks ago on my personal Facebook page, I talked about, you know, me cutting my hair and how I felt in my heart and in my spirit that God is taking me somewhere different. That, you know, I, that, you know, it, and I, <laughs> the best way I can explain it is if you, if you know what a gift is, if th there's a gift in the box, right? But you wrap it up all shoddily. You wrap, when it's just messy and it's just, you don't see the value of the gift, but when you package it just right, you want to open it and see what it is. The preparation is the packaging. It's it's making room for that. Make sure that it, people want that. And yes, God can do things instantaneously, but God does. God gives us gives us signs and wonders, even warnings through prophetic insight, um, through just. I tell people, God's a multimedia God. So like we we get a lot of insight a lot of warning a lot of preparation from god through his word through the through the through those who are that we are that we count as believers and prophetic voices and voices and guiding voices in our lives to prepare us for the next season now you have to understand the next season this next season ha probably happened at least what at the most nine ten months later after this but that to do what was necessary then to fulfill what god asked to do in the future what is God asking of you now? What is God asking of your life, of your gifting, of your calling, of your destiny? What is God preparing you for? My challenge to you this week is that you seek that. You seek the preparation of God. You seek the heart of God. Say, God, what are you preparing me for? What are you getting me ready for? What is this next level? I mean, everybody, people are like, oh, 29, this year is going to be your year. But the thing is, you never partnered with that because you didn't know where you were going. What if, if, if someone looked at you and said, oh, 2019 is your year, is your season. And rather than going, okay, it's my year, it's not in my season, but not a plan. Go to God and say, all right, you said this is my year, this is my season. Prepare me for what's coming next. Prepare me for, for that next level. Prepare me, people say I'm going to be a millionaire. Prepare me for that thousand dare status. But teach me how to do te teach me now to do what it takes to go to the next dimension if, if there's supposed to be healing in my family deal with my heart now so when the healing comes i can receive it if if i'm supposed to you know if i'm supposed to write this book give me the treatment give me the, give me the words to say to prepare for the book not just 
not not just resting on the fact that it's your year. Pray for strategy. God gave them strategy. God gave them this is what you this is what's about to come. This is what you're about to birth into this world. I need you to ca to carry it and take care of it. And I will prepare you. I will carry you through this whole process. So I pray and hope that ministered to you. Um, please check online for the videos also. While I was doing this, I recorded some audio. Woo! So it will be on our version site. Um, so you can listen to it on, on while you're on your way and living. So let me go ahead and just pray for everybody real quick who's watching. Lord God, I just thank you. Lord, I thank you for preparing us, for for showing us and pointing and telling us that you see what we're doing. You see the next dimension. Now, now this is what it is and prepare yourself for it. Like I teach us how, how to prepare, how to plan, how to wait for the promises of God and be in, be so that way we are positioned to receive what you have for us. And God, I just pray that, that what has been said today does not fall on deaf ears, but, but becomes, but falls in fertile soil that takes deep root and grows into trees of righteousness. So God, we just pray for all those during this season. Lord God, we just pray that, that this, that as we're running around and shopping, Lord God, that we're that we're also walking with a heart and a mind of expectancy to see what you have next for us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, God bless you. We love you, and I'll post the next video next week.